phosphorus. It's an element prevalent in many compounds of nature. The growth of virtually all flora, from crops to algae to even bacteria, utilize phosphorus as a key element. As a result, phosphate is being used in huge quantities for fertilizers, both on an industrial scale and in households. In addition, it's important to note that phosphate is also found in some cleaning products. As you might expect, applied quantities of phosphates are large and often done inefficiently, as it is only partially utilized before leaching into the environment either via surface runoff or soil leaching. They eventually end up in rivers and other bodies of water, sometimes quite far from where they were first generated. Phosphorus is a key contributing cause to eutrophication, which is the deterioration of water quality from uncontrolled algae growth. Algae blooms grow in the presence of two nutrients, nitrogen and phosphorus. Of the two nutrients, phosphorus is considered more critical as a limiting nutrient because there are alternative sources of nitrogen available. Consequently, phosphorus management is of extreme importance given that algae blooms indirectly lead to the consumption of available oxygen and produce dead zones, causing permanent ecosystem damage. Furthermore, eutrophication is aesthetically undesirable, causes odors, and reduces biodiversity. In light of the seriousness surrounding this issue, a logical solution would be to limit the concentration of phosphates in the water, ideally before phosphates are even released. This is where wastewater phosphate removal treatments come in handy and are extremely critical. One such treatment is EBPR. To remove phosphorus, there are two common methods. The first is chemical and the second is biological. We will focus on the biological method, which is called EBPR. EBPR stands for Enhanced Biological Phosphorus Removal. EBPR relies on the ability of phosphorus accumulating organisms, PAOs, to capture and sequester phosphorus within their cells, removing it from the environment. To understand the process of EBPR, let's first look at the entire wastewater treatment process. First, the influent water is screened for large objects and grit, followed by primary treatment, which is the physical removal of fog. Next is the secondary treatment, which removes biomass. Then, EBPR can be used as a third step, before the effluent is finally polished and discharged. There are two main phases in EBPR. First, the bacteria are held in an anaerobic tank, where they store energy and have a competitive advantage over other organisms. Then, the bacteria are transferred to an aerobic tank, where they grow rapidly, uptaking phosphorus. Later, everything goes into a clarifier where the sludge and water are separated. A bit of the activated sludge is recycled to inoculate the influent water, while the rest can be used for energy or as fertilizer. Much of the organic matter, minerals, nitrogen, and phosphorus are stored in the sludge, making for a fertilizer that is rich in nutrients and minerals. In the anaerobic tank, the PAOs uptake polyphosphates and volatile fatty acids. Then, using ATP, convert them to orthophosphates and polyhydroxyalkanoates. The ATP comes from the decomposition of polyphosphate and nutrients absorbed from the wastewater. Phosphorus is also released from the polyphosphates. Energy and nutrients are stored to prime for the aerobic part of the process. A small amount of acetate is also produced. In the aerobic tank, with the presence of oxygen, the PAOs multiply quickly, and in doing so, uptake a huge amount of phosphorus. The process involves taking in the orthophosphates and polyhydroxyalkanoates from the anaerobic phase, and then using ATP and oxygen, producing more PAOs as well as CO2 and water. A small amount of glycogen is also produced. EBPR is widely used in agricultural settings, farming, livestock and milk production, municipal wastewater treatment, drainage water treatment, and to clean industrial effluent. Oh hi, I didn't see you there. When it comes to phosphorus removal, EBPR has a few advantages and disadvantages when compared to the chemical method. On the advantage side, EBPR requires fewer chemicals as it's a purely biological process. And as a result, it's less expensive because there aren't chemicals to replenish continuously. And further, the sludge can be used as a biofertilizer which can be reapplied to the fields because there's no chemicals involved in the sludge. On the disadvantage side of EBPR compared to the chemical process, uh, the concentration of phosphorus removed tend to be lower, although modern methods still accomplish a 92% removal rate. Also, it is more energy intensive, as the aerobic part of the process requires constant oxygen sparging. 